today i am going to uh, interact with you i am not going to teach you i am going to interact with you uh, regarding the apiculture you might be know the apiculture or agri uh, the beekeeping it's nowadays only the cultivation or or maintenance of the bee that is the beekeeping but the world is now uh, going towards the little bit uh, employability sustainability and uh, the skill development we have the skills but we are working apiculture as a side business but if you are going for the full fledged business then you can able to have the some opportunity over there and uh, nowadays the uh, government of india they are working for the sweet revolutions right so today my topic is apiculture a way towards the employability sustainability and skill development and today i am uh, your instructor and we, are, we can able to discuss so many things lot of things i have to uh, interact with you you might be know uh, uh, the quote which is given by the albert einstein okay uh, if uh, you might be know that is a uh, our uh, albert einstein they giving the quote that is, if the honey bee is the disappear then we cannot able to survive or humanity cannot able to survive for the more than one month okay so that's why this apiculture or bee or pollinator is very important for the survival of the uh, human beings or humanity and i am going to uh, just highlight these things uh, my presentation is divided into three parts first on the skill development employability and sustainability first skill development in in skill development something what we are doing in the regular practice that is coming under the skill development okay like seasonal management i am just not mentioning here the financial support opportunity but uh, in the group i will share the something which is related to finance support support system okay basic requirement for the beekeeping what actually is required to start the beekeeping that things i am uh, you know uh, including in this presentation after that employability you might you know we are uh, extracting the honey and that is the one only one product we are depending so that's why we are not getting the more profit so i can uh, i'm going to uh, include it here i included here the many bee products like bee venom okay this is one of the costly uh, bee product that one i am uh, included and presently uh, everyone know that is a bee uh, uh, pollen bee pollen that is that that uh, market is day by day increase. that is also i am included here as well as queen rearing and uh, high on leaves okay so this trend high on leaves i am not included here but yes uh, you might know most of the farmers they are they are inviting the beekeepers to keep their hive in their farm to increase the pollination and that will be directly proportional to the yield so that things also is uh, we are going to cover in a, in a, in a upcoming slides okay and last topic is nothing but that is the sustainability because the un government they are giving the 12 sustainable goals and if you are looking at 12 sustainable goals very carefully everything is about the conservation poor hunger and it, uh, the honey bee they are play important role toward that, that particular most of the goals okay so these things we are going to cover yes uh, i think uh, i'm not taking your more time but i i will i i would like to give some certain information which is very important and up to, up to date information and i will skip some basic information so very first point that is skill development when you are talking about the skill development what we require the very first thing is bee suit that is a protection but when you are uh, handling day by day it is not required this is the, the bee suit okay so b suit now it is available in the market but whenever you are purchasing you should purchase that things in a very light color okay after that hand gloves shoes after that uh, this our chambers brood chamber super chamber frame so many things in there top covers okay after the hive tools smokers and so many things so these are the basic things is required but when you are starting your uh, apiculture so you must think that flora is available nearby your area 
okay and you can start the beekeeping from the uh, near about 50 hives initially so that is sufficient uh, you can able to generate the income for the uh, small families okay <coughs> but when you are going to set up in so first you have to do the survey and surveillance uh, related to the some uh, important uh, parameters like whether that particular land where you are keeping the the hives that is undulated or not so little bit you have to keep some uh, heighted places and that particular place some uh, uh, shading plant is available flora is available water is available uh, after that uh, do not have any uh, thermot uh, that is a uh, and high use okay and so many things so these are the some basic requirements and very important thing is to start this agriculture that is the you should know about the handling without handling you can't do agriculture because you have to experience yourself if you are going to experience yourself then you can able to do the better 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 way the agriculture so these things is required for the beekeeping next one is uh, what type of species? Near about 20, 20,000 species are, are uh, present in the, our ecosystem and they can able to help the pollination. But among these, this, but when we are talking about the uh, honey secretions, okay, very few species are there. Okay, very few species are there. And uh, you might be know some of these species, but I will give one new species in there that is recently found after 200 year year or day, two, 200 years after 200 years that species is identified from the karnataka right so just hold it i will i will share these things with you okay so these are the some species one is the apis dorsata uh, we can say that is the uh, uh, rock bee or giant bee this is the wild bee Okay, you cannot able to uh, domesticate it in, in the hives. Okay, and how can you able to identify? It is very ferocious, it is large in size, and they are they are developing very single comb, large single comb. Okay. Uh, next one is the this is the Apis uh, dorsata. Next species is Apis serena indica. Okay, this is also you can, can say that is Indian Indian bees. Okay, but uh, earlier we are cultivating, we are we are caring or we are maintaining the Serena Indica. But okay, but uh, the Dhaliwal, Dr. Dhaliwal, he replaced uh, sorry, Dhaliwal, the Thawal, he replaced this Apis Serena, okay, into the Venifera, okay. So Serena also having some important, but we are not that much domesticated. Okay, but uh, presently we are we are we are just domesticating the Apis manifa, that is the European bee or Italian, because they having the multiple forms, and you can able to get the uh, maximum yield, maximum yield of the uh, honey. Okay, so that's why we are going to we are we are just uh, caring this particular species. Okay. Next one is uh, that is the melipona. Okay, this is also one of the uh, stingless bees. You can say that is stingless bee. And these this, this bees are uh, managed in, in the south, southern part. But this, uh, this uh, uh, bee or this type of the uh, bee species, they are just extracting the very few amount, two to three kg, uh, kg honey they are going to produce. And it will be helpful for the only the medical purpose. Okay, so they have some importance in the medical line. Okay, and these are the some common species you might be know. But yes, this is one new species just now. It is identified in the last uh, uh, last two three months. Okay, and after the two hundred year later, uh, the Apis carnijodin. Okay, so these species are identified. Okay, so this is called as an Indian black bee. Okay, it look like a totally black. Okay, so these bees are identified in the in the just recent year. Okay, and this is one of the kind of the uh, white us 
So this type of diversity is also available in our countries. Okay. So these are the species are available. Now, the how can able to identify on the basis of the abdomen? Because most of the time the workers or foragers, uh, we are we are going to find out on the flower. But that time, how can able to identify the bee? Because the skill development is required. Without skill, you cannot able to do these things. So this is one of the new species. The total abdomen is black. Okay, Apis serena, the blackish and yellowish strips is there, but if you're talking about Apis mellifera, the stripes of black color is little bit thicker, thinner. Okay, and this gap and here gap uh, in the three species, you see here, this species that only the black and brownish color or yellowish color stripes, you can able to identify as well as the abdomen is large, small, like that. But the new species having the totally black color, black color abdomen, right? Uh, yes, uh, the last last four years, okay, we are we are giving we are training to our students in under the ELP programs, and the students are are trained to how to handle that particular thing without gloves, they can able to handle it, okay. And uh, this outcome of this ELP program, our two students are started the apiculture unit, one in the Hyderabad and one in the uh, Himachal Pradesh, and they are very successful. So this is the outcome of our uh, ELP students, and we are trained to that particular student. Each year, each batch, we are taking only 30 students. So next one is, that is the how can, there is three different type of cast is there. One is a queen, another is a drone, and another is the burger. But on the basis of the cells, how can able to identify these things? Okay, the queen cells it is large and elongated. You see here, elongated. Okay, so this is the queen cells and worker cells. Actually, that worker cells having the flat cells. This one, this one. Okay, and drone cells they having a little bit bulging type of the cells. So on that basis, you can able to identify how many cells are there and what is the condition of the of your hive, whether the worker population is more or drone population is more. If the worker population is more, means your 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 hive is very strong. Okay. So these things, the cell differentiation also you can able to identify, and it is very important because when you are going for the employability, when you are going for the employability or uh, in, in increase in the uh, apiculture unit, then what you have to do, you have to rear the queen. And if you don't have the, any queen knowledge, how they are going to develop the queen cell. So it is very difficult to do these things. Okay. So these three types of the cells are, are uh, you can able to observe in the hive. Okay. Queen, worker, and so. <laughs> if you are talking about the life stages, the life stages or life cycles. Okay, here also uh, one mystery is there. Queen only laying eggs single in a particular cell. You see here. So this is the egg of the queen, and this is the fertile egg. But if you are talking about the uh, sterile or non-fertile eggs, so that is the number of the eggs are present. Eggs are present in the peripheral area of that particular cells. Okay, two or more than two, three eggs are present. So that is that that is uh, that egg laying is not done by the particular queens, but queen only they are laying is because the abdomen is so large, large. Okay, so that's why they can able to reach up to the bottom of the of, of the cells. Okay, so once they, and once they are laying eggs, after that four to six four days later they are hatch out. Okay, and the first larva. That whitish color larvae are emerge out. Now, the four after four days, or uh, you can say that is the uh, four days, uh, that is more four days. Okay. After the uh, 24 to 48 hours later, that egg must decide whether it is you can able to go for the queen development or it is going for the work, uh, worker development or whatever. Okay. Because here the worker they are providing the feed, royal jelly, pollen, and other things. Okay, you can able to see here. 
the larva with the whitish color substance that substance is nothing but royal jelly royal jelly having the high nutrients of high nutrition value high protein value and it will be affect on their their system and they can able to change into the queen or other thing so that 24 hour later or 48 hour later that indicate or that type of the larva if you are going to select then you can able to go for the queen egg otherwise you can't okay so this is one of the crucial stage here when you are going for the b multiplication okay after that when they are going to grown up the larva they are going to feed there okay so that is the deciding factors so what type of the workers what type of feed they are going to provide okay and after that the workers they are providing feed as well as the sealing the cells and like that okay and after 21 days later the queen is emerge out i am just showing here the life cycle of the uh, life cycle of the queen because one queen if you are going to sell it that is a uh, 15 to 20 rupees one queen and within a 20 21 days you can able to multiply thousand of the queens okay so this is one of the kind of the employability but yes you can able to get it these things with the skilling okay when you are going to pull that particular larva so that is a required skills whatever the scope is required and other things is required we can able to discuss later okay so this is life cycle after that the sex determination i have told you how they are going to decide whether it is uh, fertile or it is sterile okay so queen they can able to lay the eggs if the fertilized without fertilization that is the male is developed and if the fer uh, with fertilization that is the worker is developed okay the same same case like that as well as the feeding of food availability of food provided by the workers that is also another deciding factor and this is kind of a sex determination after that you have to understand when you are seeing this uh, that frame okay how can you able to identify whether the uh, honey is packed or unpacked okay or whether the pollen is available or not so you see here when the cap honey is there or mature honey is there unmature honey is there means when you are pulling that particular frame like that okay so that drop by drop uh the the uh, the honey is percolated that is immature and that cell is not cap or you can say that is not sealed but you see here in upper sides these cells are packed the cells are packed so that is indicates yes this is the a uh, mature honey is present okay so if you are seeing the 70 to 80% uh that frame is packed then you can able to use that things for the extraction of the honey okay so you can able to make the more profit when you are when you are uh, getting this things understanding or you can able to understand this thing after understanding the life cycle everything then there is a one major uh, event is there that is the extraction of honey nowadays we are using the traditional methods but yes i will show some uh modern methods how can able to extract without any crushing and other things okay so very first thing is you have to remove the cap cells you have to uncap them okay when you are uncapping them then you can fill into the that extraction chambers okay near about 6 7 uh, frames you can able to keep it after that you have to make in the rotation so with the help of the centrifugal force So that honey is extracted. After the honey is extracting, you have to sieve them, and after that, little bit uh, debris are there. You have to clean regularly, and then you can able to go for the filling. So this is our the students. They are extracted the honey last years, and uh, from the our apiary, we are extracted thirty seven kg. And because of the only the students are working over there. So this type of the activity, activity also we are we are. doing in the our farm so one more thing uh, that last two years i think i seen that last two years uh, one method is introduced that is the called as a honey flow 
this is the honey flow chamber without crushing without anything doing you can able to extract the honey regular basis so i will just share one one uh, video with you you can able to understand how they are going to extract these things then you can able to understand the this process okay sound won't be there but we can see yes so this is the kind of you see here i will just explain no issue yeah sir video is not clear because internet is too slow yes this thing you see here in this picture you see here they are they having the hive frames okay b or uh, you can say that is the uh, flow frame they are automatically they are just inserting their pipe they are squeezing and after that they are going to ex uh, extract the honey without damaging the any brood and other things right so this cost actually the cost of that uh, this hive is huge okay near about 60 60000 like that just going to squeeze them okay and after that they are going to extract the honey so this is very simple and hygienic uh, method but yeah definitely there, there is a little bit uh, cost to have to pay right i will share these things with you okay no people okay just just i want to show something here yes, these are this type of techniques also available over there right seasonal management uh, you might be know there are different type of seasons are there uh, honey flow seasons uh, summer winter and how can you able to manage these things during during the this particular uh, abrupt changes in the, in, in the environment very first thing is we have to identify the bee flora if the flora is available throughout the year that is the then 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 your 
uh, bee hives are very strong because they are getting the sufficient foods right they can able to get the sufficient food so your colony is very strong and uh, insect pests diseases they are not might be harming to your hives <coughs> okay so this thing is there like uh, you might be you know the eucalyptus eucalyptus having the good nectar so mustard coriander sunflower tamarind khair these are the some perennial crops so many things are there so you have to identify and you have to grow that particular in the nearby the peripheral areas near about one honey bee they can able to spout up to three three uh, uh, kilometer radius area so you can able to uh, grow or you can able to make the contact with the farmer that is integrated farming to do like that okay so this is one more things after that when it is coming in the winter season winter season when the chilling uh, chilling temperature is there so you have to make the entrance very small okay so uh, the cold or chilling air will not pass to the hive with okay after that whatever the cracks is present in the hive that one you have to fill next one is you have to at the top at the top side you have to cover with the uh, gunny bags okay as well as sometimes you have to keep over there uh, that is the straws for the extra heating so like that you have to manage these things okay after that sometimes we have to change the direction little bit change the direction in the winter season because when the sun is arises that time the first rays is coming that energy will be attract to the queens uh, queens not uh, that that particular bees and they are they are just happy to scout the uh, food okay you can say the nectar or other things so these things small small things you have to keep in mind after that in the summer season you have to make it in shade shade okay after that you have to keep the water nearby the nearby the apiary okay uh, sometimes it is required to provide the uh, feed that is pollen substitute syrups depending on the condition to condition or region to region if the uh, feed is not available in the nearby the area then you have to provide the artificial feeding so these things is required okay this is the just basic idea just i am giving to you and uh, some of the science that we passed that i am in each of the each of the slide you might be getting the source so that is the authentic source i am providing you so he prepared the month wise cropping pattern which crop is present in the particular month and uh, what is the source of the nectar whether it is nectar source or whether it is the uh, cheap cheap nectar or high nectar source so you can able to prepare for your area don't depend on this thing this is only for the reference but before starting to the apiary you have to you have to just survey and surveillance for the this, this type of bees so you have you can able to prepare the nectar this calendar right after that uh, one more thing is there that is bee health how can able to manage the bee health bee health means you can how can able to uh, manage the diseases insect pests and other things Uh, in our areas, I have experience in the Punjab area, but I cannot able to uh, uh, observe any American fall food. But this is the things I why I am to share because some invention is there in the recent last one two year, one or two month year. Okay, so uh, U.S. government actually they are giving the approval for the first vaccination for the honey bees. This is the approval. Okay, approval they are getting and uh, against the American fall food worm. Okay, fall fall blood worm. Okay, so why this disease is very important? Because they are starting. This is the bacterial disease. Okay, they are going to feed on the larva, and the slimes is coming out, and some fouling smells is came out from there when when the decomposed is there. Okay, and this is you see this 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 slimes is came out. This is nothing but this is stretch test for the American fall blood disease. Okay, so that like that you can able to identify and some foul smells is came out. This is the indication. Yes, this uh, American fall fall birds are causing damage. 
okay and one more invention is there that us the approval first vaccine in the world for the honey bees right so this is the one more thing is there okay and this is the distribution in our india you can able to see here there is no uh, incidence till date okay that's why i am not taking this things but yes in the remaining countries you can able to see that this is the incidence is there okay So the very uh, problematic pest is that is the greater wax moth, Galleria melanogaster, and you can able to see this distribution pattern. So this, this particular graph throughout the world, throughout the, India is fully covered. You see here, but when this incident is came, when you are uh, when the food availability for the honey is less, the uh, pollen is weak. That time the incidence of the greater wax moth is there and this moth is entering during the night times and they are laying eggs eggs nearby they are about 15 to 150 eggs they are laying in the cracks where they are getting the species okay so you see here this is the life cycles they are laying eggs after that they are going to feed on the combs okay initially you cannot able to identify whether the uh, incidence is there but when they are start from the third fourth in star they may be in the gallery okay and if you are not cleaning properly if you are not inspecting properly to the uh, uh, that particular hive so they can able to cover within a 15 to 20 days the full, uh, the full colonies are destroyed that is the permanent loss in the particular colony means they about 40 to 40000 40 to 50000 is lost instantly this is the kind of the thing and this is the very prominent pest in our countries okay so the july and october and november and december this time you can able to observe the severity of the particular insect pest because that time the nectars or food is not available and totally we are depending on the flora so that time you have to Check whether that incidence are there or not, because we are totally observing these things in our our, our hive in in LPU. So the our students are working in the uh, this particular problem, and uh, student is student. They are just uh, handling uh, opening the hive and uh, keeping this hive near about fifteen to twenty meters open, so that larvae larvae not but adults are just fly and they are entering into the analysis. so this type of the also problem you can able to face okay so when you are going to handle this type of pests so be cautious okay and they are, this insect is entering uh, during the night time <coughs> so how can you able to manage this things very first thing is we have to identify whether the sufficient food is available to the particular bees and that colonies are strong okay then that particular entrance of their big colony you should be reduced so do not enter do not give any permission to the enter any any other foreign uh, insect or any any organisms uh, there is a need to regularly monitor and you have to clean bottom hives okay or bottom bottom sorry bottom hive and bottom okay down side and if it is possible if this uh, heat is high or uh, sun that scorching heat is there then you can able to keep that things in the exposing to the sun uh, near about uh, 15 to 20 minutes okay so it will be help to manage the, the things this is the just uh, basic management practices some are telling that is oxalic acid uh, oxalic sorry oxalic acid not but uh, yes some uh, they are telling you can able to apply the Uh, botanicals and other things, but sometimes it will be feel that irritation to the bees. Whatever the live live bees are available in the particular hive, so they get the irritations. So this type of the observation also we have. So that's why we cannot able to apply the uh, direct spraying on the broods. Okay. Uh, in the storage, if the incidence of of the uh, that greater wax moth is there. and you are going to store that frames in the somewhere okay so be be cautious when you are going to 
talk that particular high uh, particular frame then you just make it uh, cover tightly and plaster with the mods and other things so that other other uh, cross contamination is not there to uh, to do these things okay after that uh, fumigation is very important okay regularly fumigation but uh, some some scientists are they, they are telling that when they are doing with the fumigations so that residues are present in the particular combs okay so uh, recommended dose you should apply that sulfur powder okay that sulfur is there okay so you can able to do the fumigations okay after that if it is not available then you can able to keep that frames with the low temperature at least 0 to 10 degree so that all the uh, stages of the wax moth is done due to the <clears throat> due to the low temperature okay uh, some of the scientists they are studying okay they are telling yes the bacteria is present because bt everyone know bt we can able to useful for the little bit of concern okay because yes it like that they can able to do that. okay but yes stereotype of seven this is the stereotype of seven uh, that is stereotype seven is azwai azwai okay that stereotype it will be help to manage this particular pest okay according to the this scientists okay after that one more scientist is there sorry i am not mentioning here okay uh most of the people uh, they are doing the experimentation okay and they might be using some naphthalene ball ethylene dihydromide and other things but uh, the scientists are they they are they are said like that to do not use these things because their residues are present in in the particular honey okay so this is kind of the adult pressure also okay and uh, yes these are some little bit tradition to me but now how to be able to manage this with the new technique so one more thing things i i search in the research paper so entomopathogenic nematode so entomopathogenic nematode also you can able to use for the managing of this particular pest they cannot able to affect on the uh, in this paper they are not mentioning anything uh, whether they are affecting on the bee larvae or not we have to see. but yes uh, here the two type of species are there that is entomopathogenic nematode one is the stenonema and another is the heterodapy they are using the two species stenonema pentididi and stenonema apocapsi actually in this particular gut of the nematode having the bacteria that is the genorhabdus that is the mutualism you can able to see and when they are going to feed to any insect so they are just secret the bacteria are secreting some chemicals okay so due to the chemicals that particular insects are that so these things you see under okay when we are spraying this nematode okay very first two hours that bacterial phase pre bacterial phase is there okay so that any foreign materials are entering into the any any body so they are they are just affecting on their immunization okay immunity immunity so after that after two hours later the bacterial growth is there and after that the bacteria they are going to secrete some toxic and due to that toxic materials or due to that toxic toxic substance they are going to show some uh, some uh, symptoms that is the symptomatic symptoms to the that particular larva and the particular larva will die so this is the only just uh mechanism how it will be work in the early stage the bacteria pre bacterial phase after that the bacterial phase is going to uh growth stage and the bacterial growth going to secrete some chemicals okay toxic chemicals so that chemicals affect on their particular larva and it is directly dead of the particular insect so what type of the chemical they are going to secrete you see there these are the some protease and protease inhibitor chemicals are going to secrete with the help of chemicals they are uh, showing the uh, some some symptoms that is the death of the particular 
insect. Yes, we are believing, uh, means we are promoting our students to do this type of the work with the, with the in, in collaboration with the some uh, reputed institute. And one of the, our students, she is working on the uh, bioefficacy of the botanicals against the greater wax moth in the collaboration with the NIPHM Hyderabad. So she find out some botanicals, which is showing the significant effect on the galeria. But she not, uh, again, the future scope is there. We can able to directly spray this type of the botanicals in the live hive, and you can able to observe the uh, effectiveness, whether they are showing uh, any significant detrimental effect on the uh, bee larvas or not. Okay, so this is the future scope she keep. Okay. Now, another uh, common pest is that the vast harnet is there. Okay. <laughs> Everyone know this is the harnet vast. Okay, this is a little bit larger than the uh, paper wax or yellow wax. Okay. What she doing? Actually, she going to enter into the beaker colony and she bringing the larvas and other things. Uh, the adult also, they, they are just hold it and came with their height. So it will be affect on the population of the particular height. So this is the things also there, but how can able to manage, we can able later. Okay, but how can able to uh, monitor whether this colony is weak or not? Okay, very first things that this is the scouting harnet. Okay, so the one harnet is came, after that just they are monitor. If they are thinking the colony is very low, they are secreting some chemicals. Okay. So they are secreting some chemicals. That is the uh, <coughs> scouting. Okay. And next one is the, they are making the pheromone. If they are making them so, so other, other insects or other hornets are attracted towards that particular colony. And it is like that, just slotting the uh, bees. So like that, they can able to manage. They can able to capture. It is actually scavenger. Okay. It is actually scavenger. So this is the one of the major pests. How can I able to manage this pest? So many things are there. Okay, if you are searching in the Google, so many, so many things are there. And I just took uh, from the Google. This is the they prepared the some uh, traps. Okay, so instead of the purchasing from the traps from outside, you can able to prepare yourself. You take the bottles and you make these different different holes. Okay. And uh, yes, you can able to use the protein X powder with uh, boiled uh, chicken. Okay, so it will mix it, and after that, you keep over near to the uh, that particular hive. That is a wasp or hornet hive. Okay, so all the insects are attracting over there. Like that, you can able to manage. After that, otherwise, you can able to do the sweating. Manual sweating is there. Uh, sometimes you have to search out that. Uh, how you of the vast and other things, and you have to burn it. Okay. Some of the people, what they're doing, they are they are just taking the kerosene and uh, uh, petrol and just spread, uh, spreading over there. So that they can able to manage. But yes, you have to manage very sustainably. One of the scientists they are studying. Okay, they are comprised one chemical that is the heptyl butyrate. Okay, five microliter with the chicken extract one gram. Okay. So when they are going to hang in, in simultaneously, okay, means both, this both chemical, means heptyl butyrate and chicken extract, two hives or two filaments going to hang in the same places. So chicken extract showing, showing significant effect, but when they they are when they are uh, hanging separately in separate locations. So that time you can able to see that is the near about at per they are showing the effect. So you can able to use both ways. Chicken extract is nothing but that is the protein. Okay, you can able to use the chicken or um, any chicken or fish protein also you can able to use. Okay, so like that you can able to manage these things. If you don't have these things, you can able to use the protein X powder. Okay, little bit, uh, one or two drop of the uh, decomposed chicken pieces and uh, 
one drop of the web to more viscous so after two to two to three days later you can able to observe that glass are attracting over there so like that you can able to manage these things one more thing is there uh, <coughs> That is about the art. Angus sir, Angus sir, I'll interrupt you. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. I'll interrupt yes, you yes. for a second. Sir, you will have to speed up somewhat because our next speaker is like you know waiting. Uh, she has message because we will have yes, to yes, take yes, the yes, questions also. Definitely. We'll have to let us speed up, sir. Right. It's already, definitely. I think, seven. Right. Right. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Well, okay, I know, sir. Know. When you start teaching, na sir, you forget everything. You explain everything to the students. I can understand that, sir. <laughs> give me give me 15 minutes i will i will complete everything okay okay sir yes sugar syrup candy and pollen substitutes is very important because uh, this is the only the energy source for the particular i'm not going to discuss this thing how we are going to prepare this this is the simple process for the sugar syrup candy preparation but in the candy preparation when you are going to prepare the candy so you add here the vinegar for the increasing the test okay after that pollen substitute nothing is there you can able to use any any uh, any protein powder okay so mostly we can able to use the factory soya flour okay and uh, is after that you have to mix it and then you can able to give the uh, act as a pollen substitute uh, b product now we are talking about the b uh, means employability so these are the product honey bee pollen okay royal jelly propolis venom and wax these are the mostly totally we are like, we are doing uh, these things about only the honey but yes i am going to give something about these new things okay so these are the some characteristics of the uh, honey okay uh, i am not going to discuss about honey how this is a we, we know but yes we we know we we know is nowadays you might be know this is the uh, 1 lakh rupees kg and how we are going to extract these things it is very simple process but yes for that one you have to understand the strongness of the colonies okay and uh, this b you know attracting the industry that is the pharmaceuticals and cosmetic and skin okay so actually we in b you know how can able to extract you can able to take this uh, small things you can able to prepare yourself okay so electric frame is there wooden in the down side wooden after that one um, glass frame is there and after that uh, electric filaments is there and after that you have to pass the uh, very small voltage chemi uh, electricity so that time they thinking yes something danger is there and they are more aggressive at the time of the when the when the bees are the more aggressive they are stinging more and they are excreting the uh, they are just secreting the uh, venom and you can able to extract scrap it okay and you can able to store in the cool temperature so this is the kind of the extraction method So police is there, and you can able to use in a different way. I'm not going to these things. Uh, B pollens, B pollens nowadays they are attracting the more, many more people for the health conscious. And how can able to uh, collect this B pollen? So pollen trap is there like that. You can able to uh, stick in front of the entrance, okay. And after that, when the bees are entering to this particular holes, okay. so extra pollens are shed out and you can able to collect here okay so like that you can able to collect another one is the bee queen okay bee queen is very important near about 21 days is required and after that uh, you have to do the grafting okay and uh, this particular uh, venom venom having the 1 lakh rupees kg okay honey having the cost near about 300 kg rupee okay and uh, pollen near about 800 kg is like that b queen one queen uh, 15 to 20 rupees kg you can able to sell it okay so you have to graft it but when you are going to how you are going to graft okay you have to require some grafting tools you have to scoop with the help of the that particular grafting tools uh, with that royal jelly white color is royal jelly you can able to see so then you can able to do these things after that uh, that uh, workers are going to going to feed them and you can able to get this uh, win like that so this is a simple process okay after that sustainability just give me 10 minutes sustainability everyone know now the 
12 goals, 17, 18 goals by the UN government. And most of the goals are depending on the SDGs, like uh, zero hunger, sustainability, diversity, biodiversity, and like that. Okay. Why it is required to sustain or conserve the bees? You, if you are seeing this graph, okay. So most of the bees or APD family are going to extinct. Okay. Most of the seven to eight percent of bees are going to extinct day by day. Okay. And if you are talking about the India, you see in the Indian conditions, only the South Indian, I don't know whether it is uh, data and what, what days they are taking. But in South India, according to this graph, the South Indian, uh, South Indian uh, states are a little bit increasing. That is a green color. That uh, diversity is increased. But in the North India, you see here, is going to decline. Why it is declined? Because application of the pesticide, habitat loss, Okay, so these are the things is there. Exposure of the exposure of the chemicals. And one more thing is we people also also uh, uh, involved in this matter because we are taking the sip of the tea. We are enjoying, but honeybees are confused. They are not went to their home. They are just thinking, yeah, this is the nectar, and they are they are dying over there. So it is my request to all of you, when you are taking the tea, sip of the tea, just crush that particular cup so that you can able to save the some bees, okay? So what is the solutions? You have to first identify the high nectar and pollen content flowering crops, and you have to make their, their particular calendar. So this is the only one option is there. And uh, these things we are, we are doing some experiment in our, our uh, LPU farm, one of the students, they are working on the multifloral, multiflora, and uh, they are, we are growing Singra, Coriander, and Linseed. And these three crops are, are showing the very good effect to enhancing the predator as well as the pollinators. Second one is the promotion at the grassroots level, that is as an extension program. And uh, regularly, we are celebrating the World Bee Days. Last two years, we are celebrating World, World Bee Days to aware about the bee and bee conservations. Okay, this is the last year photographs. And uh, if you are believing on the Indian rituals, many scientists are working on the Indian rituals. Okay, many not, but very few scientists. Okay, and with the help of this Agnihotra Mantra, everyone know Agnihotra Mantra. Okay, uh, at the time of the sunset and at the time of the sun rays. We have to do like this, this, and we can able to increase increase the agriculture biodiversity. Okay, cows health, animal health, earthworm uh, activity, as well as the some uh, air pollution, water pollution, everything we can able to improve. And I, I just shown here giving some link that is authentic information is there. This is the kind of the. Agnihotra or homotherapy, it acts as a modern science. It will be, and this science will be uh, applied in the medical, agriculture, environmental applications. So this is, this is the just giving, I'm just giving the uh, general idea. Okay. And uh, through this idea, this, through this presentation, I want to uh, give message, carry forward our treasure. We have to save our diversity. We have to save our planet for our child. Thank you.